number one need of a man, and so if you're married to a normal, healthy man, his number one need is honor. And so honor and esteem, it is our greatest need in life. And so Ephesians 5.22, when it says, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. Men and women are equals. The verse right before that says, Submit to one another in the fear of Christ. And so women aren't under men in the sense of being unequal or subjected or in any way put in a, an inferior position. This is the key to a man's heart. The only way that you'll ever relate to a son, a father, a brother, a boss, or a husband is to know that his number one need is honor. It's the key to every man's heart. And so you're not being put down, you're literally given, being given by God here the key to your husband's heart. And it says, as to the Lord, as to the Lord. The standard is not how, you, how your mother honored your father. Listen, we live in a very dishonoring society. Did you know that? A very smart alecky, uh, rude, obnoxious, disrespectful society. The worst thing you can do, ladies, is to base the way you treat your husband off what you see on television, unless it's our TV show. <laughs> the little caveat there. But so, so much of what we see today in the media, in popular media, is a very disrespectful, smart alecky women, and they don't relate to men well. They're not successful in their relationships with men. It's as to the Lord. And, the, and here's the question. If Jesus, if this were Jesus, then how would you treat him? I mean, literally. And, and a lot of women say, well, my husband doesn't act like Jesus. I mean, he's a, you know, he acted anything remotely like Jesus. I treat him like Jesus. Well, <laughs> men are as tender in their egos as women are physically. And a big, strong man who looks big and strong, it's not just what you say, it's how you say it. And he's very, very sensitive as to, are you respecting him? Are you making him feel significant in his esteem? Let me say it another way. It's oxygen in his world. He will gravitate to the place where he has the most honor. He will gravitate away from the place where he doesn't get honor because it's painful. It's painful for him. And so when you give your husband honor, it literally fills his world with oxygen and it draws him to you. And so let me tell you the secrets of, of giving your husband honor. And the first is, allow him to fail. I'm not talking about self-destructing. If your husband is in some kind of a self-destructive behavior, you need to take action. You, there needs to be intervention or some type of uh, very strong uh, warning to him and, and behavior that stops him. But every man's going to make mistakes. I mean, every man's going to make mistakes. And so let me, let me talk for just a minute about driving because, you know... Uh, <laughs> If you want to know if you have demons, just get in the car together. Because they all manifest in the car. That's what I believe. And so I remember my wife Karen, Karen's wonderful and we have, we have a wonderful marriage, but, but Karen is the most demonstrative driver and passenger I've ever met. Uh, and she, when she's driving, everybody on the road has a name, Mr. Lady, you know, whatever, and those are the nice ones. And er <laughs> And she just, she can't drive without being upset. I mean, she's so upset, she's offended at everybody. And, you know, they're driving too slow, they're changing lanes, they're what, whatever they're doing. And, and so when I'm driving, it's just this constant narration of my driving. And, and we've, learned, we've learned over the years, you know, it's kind of like our Las Vegas rule, is whatever happens in the car stays in the car. Well, that's, our, <laughs> that, that's our new rule for driving. And so really, we do, we get in the car, and you know, if we get flustered at each other, we just leave it in the car. But early in our marriage, it caused a lot of trouble. But I remember hearing, uh, you know, Joyce Meyer was teaching one day about her and her husband, Dave. And she was nagging at him while he was driving, you know. And it, it, he, was getting, he was getting there, but she, he needed to go her way, you know. And this is Karen. Whichever way I go is longer than her way. And so the, they got in the car and she was nagging. And, and I can't remember if it was her saying this to herself. I think it was the Holy Spirit saying this to her from the way she told it, but they were like a stoplight. They were mad at each other because she was nagging about his driving. And, and she was sitting there and it was like the Holy Spirit said to her, why can't you shut up? <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here and let you nervously kind of ingest that one. Listen, why can't you shut up? You know, I mean, when you're, it doesn't matter. I mean, what's more important, being right or being happy? And some people say, being right, well, okay. 
but you're going to get there anyway, probably. You know, just state your peace and be quiet. Just let your husband do some things wrong. Let him do some things you don't agree with. And, and let him do it without shaming him and, and nagging at him and things like that. You have to let him make mistakes. Every husband's going to make mistakes. Any woman can honor a perfect man. The trick is honoring one that's imperfect. Really and truly, uh, when we got married, I really was a, a, a jerk in a lot of ways. And I'm very thankful that you stood up to me and you mm -hmm. told me the truth. You weren't mealy mouth or anything like that. <laughs> Uh, but you really did honor me more than I deserved. And it really was one of the things that changed me mm -hmm. because you didn't become my enemy. You, you became a, a person that God used in my life to confront me mm -hmm. about things that I was doing wrong, but you never became my enemy and you never treated me the way that I deserved to be treated. And, and you've always honored me. You know, there's a respect there. And I'm just saying you meet that need in me. And well, and I appreciate that. But it, you know, it's something I had to learn too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would, you know, study the Word of God or other stories about women and their marriages. And I just learned from older women that it really wasn't something that was important, you know, is, is how we treat you. Not only is it important for you, but it's important for the rest of the family. It's important for That's our right. children to see how I'm treating you. You know, and it's important for sons to see or daughters Absolutely. to see how to treat their, their spouses. Absolutely. Well, for, for all the women watching, we want you to know we have a program coming up on your husband knowing how to meet your needs. So you make <laughs> sure he watches that program. But women are absolutely equal with men, and we know that. But this is something that is true of your husband, and meeting this need, it really will enhance your relationship. We're glad that you joined us today. Come back next time for more Marriage Today. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us. Partner with Marriage Today and receive the Marriage on the Rock series on CD or DVD. Marriage Today's latest book, Happy Happy Love, will supercharge your marriage with practical tips, wisdom, and inspiration for every stage of marriage. Visit happylovebook.com. Follow your interests and get social by connecting with Jimmy and Karen and the Ministry of Marriage Today on Twitter. Become a rock-solid partner today and equip yourself with the tools you need for a successful marriage. $14, $28, or $56 per month. Choose the partnership level that's right for you. Become a rock-solid partner today.